All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another photo critique from the Digital Photo Rec group on Flickr. I'm Toby. And I'm Christina. And again, we went through, um, or we went to that method of asking you all to pull pictures out of this group, put them on the Facebook page, and, um, you know, again, just some fantastic photos in here. But I like to, um, you know, give those folks who uh, are involved in both communities a uh, leg up in getting their images critiqued. Um, I will be in here some more soon, writing some critiques out. But let's dive right into it. We might end up being a two-parter or a one-parter. We'll see. But let's start off this very first image with Daniel's barn shot here. Barn 008. The first thing that stands out to me about this picture is the monochromatic nature of it. There's not that many colors. Um, there's not that many colors. It seems very simple in terms of the palette that's used, except for the red on the right side. Other than that, I don't know. I don't. I honestly don't know what I would do differently um, to make this picture stronger. I think it's an interesting photo as do, it is. Do you like the monochromatic aspect of it? I do. Yeah, okay. I do. Uh, that wasn't clear to me. Yeah. Uh, I I do like that, and I think maybe I would like crop it here and get rid of this shadow. I think this shadow is a little bit distracting from everything else. And yeah, just crop it right there. And I think, I like that it's balanced, you know, on the left and the right side, even though there's not as many branches on this side, the red kind of balances it out. It's a good example of how color can be used as an element to balance an image, because yep. um, different colors stand out differently than, you know, some colors stand out differently than other colors or more than other colors. And I think that's all I have to say about it. Okay, good. I'll just, I'll just add that uh, it feels a little bright to me. It could, I think the exposure could be pulled down just a small amount. Um, I feel like we're starting to lose some detail in this nice wood down in here. And I think I, um, I like Christina's suggestion of maybe cropping and getting rid of that shadow. But another suggestion I'd be curious to try is capturing the whole window. Uh, it feels like it probably ends just above, and it might be neat to put just the window in the frame. Or there is some really nice texture right in here to come in really close and capture these old vines on this old wood. Okay. Um, but otherwise, I think it's a nice image. Thank you, Daniel. Next, from Luke. Well, it seems like this image is of the ribbon on this chandelier this particular ribbon that's what i'm gonna say that the subject is but it also seems like maybe it could just be this part of the chandelier and the first thing that sticks out to me is that this is cut off and it should be cut off um i feel like you should get the whole thing it's also out of focus and it looks like there might be some motion blur and the color in this image is just a little bit weird it's like all over the place like there's a lot of yellow coming from the chandelier, which I'm sure is gold. But then I can't tell if the white balance is off in the ceiling or if it's just been color corrected to the point where it just looks magenta back there. In the top left corner. Yeah, or, or, yeah. or just but, in general, the yeah, background. Yeah, you're right, overall. Yeah. So, and I feel like there's no clear subject in this image. It's just kind of like maybe it's the ribbon, but it's honestly not sharp enough, not in focus enough to... Uh, say whether or not it's an, it's a subject. Yep, um, I agree agree with all of that. I'll just point out some the meta details here is that it does look like soft. You're using the 18 to 35 with no image stabilization, so that means you need your shutter speed needs to be faster than your focal length. Which, if you look here, 1 40th of a second, it looks like it is. But folks, please remember when shooting with crop sensor cameras, you got to multiply that amount times 1.6. So we're up, you know, in the neighborhood of 50 or 60. Uh, and also shooting at that f2.8, you have pretty shallow depth of field. My suggestion for maybe trying to, uh, I think there's some neat uh, potential for repeating elements here if you uh, brought the camera angle down just a little bit. Now, this chandelier could be fairly higher up on the ceiling, so that might have been difficult. But to capture this guy sharp, and then there's another one in the back, and then another one in the back, and you would have had this repeating swoop of the brass and the red ribbon. And I think just focusing in on those three, one, two, three across, might have set up for some neat patterns there. Yeah. Another 
possible way to kind of sh showcase and illustrate this chandelier would be to shoot it f down below, straight up. Oh, neat. It would, I think it, the radial shape and pattern would kind of look cool. So maybe try that. Yep. That's very good. Great. Thank you, Luke. Now we got a shot from Henry. I like this shot because it's a really nice portrait. I can't, you know, I saw this a, a little while ago and I couldn't decide if the Brooklyn Bridge in the background was a distracting element or if it, if, or if it was uh, aiding the portrait. I guess it depends. So if this, if the Brooklyn Bridge is really meaningful to, meaningful to this person, then it definitely should be on there. If it's like a travel photo, or you, this is the first time you've ever seen the Brooklyn Bridge, or you just want pe to let people know you were here, then, then, then yes, then it, it's it's good. Um, it is really nicely composed. I feel like it's very balanced. I like that you're shooting half lit, but it, the shadows and the highlights are not terribly distracting. Um, and even though it's lit by the sun and it's in full sun. The shadows are pulled up enough. I don't know if you did this in Lightroom or Photoshop, but, but they're pulled up enough that there's enough, or maybe there's some fill from the floor. But they're pulled up enough that there's not. it's not too contrasty and it's not a bad portrait. And the depth of field is good, the choice of depth of field. I, I, I think it's an overall nice, balanced portrait. Good. Yeah, I think you've done a great job of positioning uh, this young man right here to the left. No, not, not intersecting with the bridge until way down here, and that doesn't matter at all. I think the, the bridge adds nice context and is blurred out nicely. 70 to 200 can be a wonderful portrait lens. Christina, I wanted to ask your opinion. Shooting at f2.8 now, you do have just his backhand here slightly out of focus. Do you I, care? No. No, okay. I was just curious what you thought of that. The face is the focal the point. Face is, the face is the focal point, and it's in sharp focus, and it looks good. I like it. Nice pick, Henry. Thanks for sharing. Oh, and I, one more thing to add is another thing we've talked about before is focal length um, affecting your perspective. And in this case, really brings that Brooklyn yes. Bridge in. If you had shot this with a wide angle lens, that bridge would be way back and much further down in the picture. Absolutely. Um, and really not add anything and to it. I think if I were to add anything else, it's just correct for white balance so that the skin tones are not as... They look slightly, just a little bit pink to me. I don't know if it's your monitor, but um, it looks like it should be just a teeny bit warmer. Yeah, we are looking on this monitor that's not great. Um, and you are very picky about skin tones, but uh, you can see a little room for improvement there. Great. I love this image. I think it's it's really interesting that it's slanted down. Um, obviously they're sitting at a, a hill that has an incline. I guess hills, most hills have inclines. But it's cool. I love the shadows and then the sun just peeking up or down just below the horizon. And I love the, the negative space and how the orange just fills the screen. I can't decide if the sun's actually, the sun looks a little bit of like a distraction to me um but i i mean i i don't know i can't decide if i i disagree i think it's fine there yeah it feels balanced to me i mean it doesn't feel like out of place it just keep it takes my eye away from people too much i think but but i really love the the colors in the sky and the contrast with the black it's i don't think i would change anything about this i i love it i think it's a great image if i had captured this i would be ecstatic. I guess I would say that this hand here, either Photoshop it out, oops, oh. Hold on. either Photoshop it out or uh, maybe you took another frame where his hand isn't sticking out like that. That's a little distracting. Yeah, and then maybe this, this hand really falls. Notice, but, right. Uh, no, I was actually just going to say being super picky, get rid of that tiny little dot of light down there. I'm not sure where that's coming from. And I hate to say it, I don't. I just was rubbing my monitor. I'm pretty sure this is a little dirt spot on your sensor. They start to show up around f16 and higher, um, so that's there. I also I like these two little right here. I noticed those and I like them. It just this is taken with a kit lens. Really nice. I love it. Great. Thanks, Ahmed. Wooly back photo. One of his first studio sessions. So this has, there's a lot of room for improvement here. I think the 
first thing I would say is white balance. Her skin looks very pink and blue, very cold, very, very magenta. So warm up the color and fix some of the tint with, you know, add a little bit of green. I would also increase the exposure too. Um, it looks a little bit dark to me. And lastly, I'm just, I'm going to say that I'm not loving this person's expression. I, I feel like there's, maybe this is something that we'll start talking about more as we make more of these and they start to get repetitive because I feel like a lot of the feedback must sound very similar to a lot of people. But I feel like emotion and connection with the subject can greatly impact the way that a, a photo is and, and what it communicates. I think that you can have a really amazing, perfectly executed photo in terms of like technical terms. Uh, but if you don't have any connection with the subject or the subject looks a little bit out of it and there's no, no emotion and the eyes look dead, then, you know, then you don't really have, um, or, or the photo can lose its impact. So I would say, you know, think, think about what you want to communicate with this picture. I think it's great practice that, you know, you are, or, or it's great that you're doing this as practice. Um, but, but yeah, also try to, you know, to play with your subject and communicate and try to get different expressions that are a little bit more emotive and a little bit stronger, um, you know, than this, because I'm not really sure what she's thinking. I'm not really sure if she's bored or if she's angry, if she's mad, or if, you know, I'm not sure. And then also, I don't know if, I mean, this may be the way that the dress is, but it looks to me like the dress is just kind of um, folded up in a weird way. It just, it doesn't, it seems like this should be filled with this satiny stuff, and it isn't, so it, watch for those things. I feel like, um, you know, it's our job as photographers to watch for all the tiny details and models are just there to um, to communicate good expressions. Hmm. Nice. I'll just add that I think uh, lighting-wise you did an awesome job of the completely seamless background. Um, I, I don't think that was Photoshop uh, and so that has worked out really nicely. Uh, this, the way this uh, edge of the dress here catches the light I think is nice. It just feels really sharp. Um, right up through that. But then otherwise, I agree with what Christina said. And in some ways, this is, I, I don't have a lot of studio experience. And so, you know, there are certain things that you, Christina, mentioned that I hadn't really noticed. So um, definitely being, I would say picky, but, you know, really putting your critique in there. Right. I mean, I, I realize that this is this person's first studio session. So I'm not necessarily trying to like put them down, but I'm just trying to offer some, you know, feedback that can be used next time. And I think that this person isn't separated enough from the background. I feel like she just kind of falls into the background. I know you have a hair light, which is great. I can see the hair light. But I think a uh, backlight or side light would be a little bit better just to just, add a little bit more separation. So just a little bit more light around the edge. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Okay, great. And the legs too, yeah. Okay. All right, thank you, Wooly Back Photo. David Menard. Long exposure with a pop flash at just the right moment. He had light up wheels that showed his path. I used a remote trigger, shutter trick to trigger the exposure and stood by off to camera left with an SB910, that's a flash, fired by hand. Skater, my brother Mike. All right, this is pretty cool. Um, so for folks to understand what's going on here, there was a long exposure. Let's see if it tells us how long here. Five seconds long. That caught the light trails of the wheels on the skateboard and then right as Mike was doing this trick, I don't know anything about skating, um, doing an ollie oop, let's say that it's an ollie oop. <laughs> um, then David fired the flash, which produced enough light that it put this impression on the sensor. So that's how we see him here and sharp, but we still get the light trails as well. I think this is, um, this is a cool picture. I think I might like to see him lit up just a little bit more. now. If you've got another brother, David, or sister, get them out there with a second flash to fill in from the other side. Yes. Um, so really 
fill him out, 360. He's yeah. a little flat, which in some ways I kind of I kind of like, but I think it would be a stronger picture if we had um, from both sides. Yeah, just a little, like, like the previous picture, just a little bit of a rim light so that you can separate the subject from the background yeah, a bit we, more. Yeah, we just start to lose him back here yeah. along there. Yeah. And then just get rid of a couple of these stars up here because they're just, they don't add anything. Yeah. Great um, timing, though, in composition. Yep. I think it's really, really cool. Um, and I'm going to just bring down the shadows back here so this just fades away and we really just have this swoop and this swoop and this swoop, I think. No, or light it up, too. I mean, More I think it, it could be cool if this is kind of dark and then this is lit up back here. I think mm. it, that could be interesting. All right, so go buy a pile of SB910s yeah, because they're so cheap. You Those know, are you, really nice flashes. You could do also set up a tripod and do a composite. So, you know, uh -huh. have you obviously can't light have your brother hold a light and light himself from the other side, but you could, um, you know, go around and light different parts of the skate park or the skate place and um, kind of, you know, make a little bit more dimensional image. That is what uh, photographer Mike Kelly does when he does his architectural architectural photography. Yep. He, I mean, he has many flashes, but he uses them. That's a great suggestion. And just for folks not really quite understanding, so we're saying put the camera on a tripod take multiple pictures where you light different sections of the scene and then in Photoshop, um, that's one thing Lightroom can't do. Yes. Is you can't layer anything. Um, well, you can you can tell Lightroom to open them at, in one file as layers in Photoshop. In, yes, in Photoshop. Yeah. yeah. So, so it makes the... Right. So then you would, you know, you would, ex you would uh, erase the dark areas to expose the lighter layers underneath that had been lit differently. Right. Or, or, yeah. Yeah, great. Thank you, David. Crystal. We've seen this cutie before. Yeah, this is a really sweet portrait. I love everything about it except the white balance. This, the white balance is a little bit blue um, and a little bit magenta. And it's, you know, it's super sharp and in focus, and the eyes are in the perfect part of the frame. Um, and the expression is great. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'd be happy if I had taken this picture. All right, so I think Christina covered a lot of important bits here. I, again, lovely photo, really cute. Uh, i just point out to folks this was taken with a 40 millimeter f2.8. Great lens, can be a really nice portrait lens on a crop sensor. And I think this is great. The eyes are just sharp, really nice. Yes. Cute, cute, and really filled. Some people might say too close. They, they might have tried... Well, I don't think people would look at this and say too close, but when you're taking pictures, it's so easy to say, I want to capture this whole thing. No, get in close, close, close. Yeah. Yes. Like it could be it. super messy in the background, but we have no idea because... That's right. doesn't matter. Cleaned up the mess by being close. Thanks, Crystal. George has entered or shared with us this... Do you know what this is? An otter. An otter. Snacking on something that looks delicious. Now, we, we ran through these really briefly before, and both of us first commented, look at those little otter paws, P-A-W-S. <laughs> they are interesting looking. I've never really taken time to notice an otter's paws before. Um, it's very cute. And this is a nice picture. Again, this is another example of being very close, really capturing. It looks like it has opposable thumbs. I don't think I ever realized that about otters. I think they have pretty good raccoons, too. That's awesome. I mean, they're not technically opposable, but... But it looks like... But, you know, they're very dex... Dexterous? Dexterous, thank you. Very dexterous. Uh, I think this is a nice photo. I, it You know, it's... um, It doesn't... I, I almost feel funny saying this, but in some ways it doesn't feel as sharp as it could be. Uh, I think the focus is... Uh, F7-1. At think, 500 millimeters. Ooh, oh, you're shooting with the 150 to 500. This is, is this the new Tamron 150 to 500? Oh, no, it's the new one is the 150 to 600. 600. So you're shooting all the way out at 500 on a crop sensor at 1640, but it's a stabilized lens. You should be okay there. And, you know, there's your shutter speed is fast. It looks like the focus is on the, the paws. The paw. And the whiskers, maybe. Yep. So some people might be thinking f7.1, that should be a pretty good depth of field, but when you are shooting at, at shooting at 500 on a crop sensor, your depth of field still is going to be pretty narrow. 
Um, I'm, I'm curious if this is cropped at all, I wonder. Aperture priority, too. Um, so, so I think you could have gone to a slightly higher ISO and um, a slightly higher aperture. Um, you know, stop your aperture down a little bit to give yourself just a little bit more depth of field. I feel like I'm being fairly picky here, but it does, you know, I would like to see this to feel like it's a little bit more in focus, even if the paw was the subject, because I don't think the paw really was, even as interesting as it is, because it just, it's a, such a small area. Yep. So that's what I would say. Yep. So, yeah. Great. Thank you, George. Eduardo. This is a beautiful shot. This is really pretty. I love it. It's very nice. Yeah. Uh, 10 second exposure at f4. I love the motion here in the trees. It looks like it, it was probably a little bit windy. I, I really like that. Hmm. I actually hadn't noticed until you pointed that out. Um, you know, the moon coming up there is small and bright, but I think it works. Yeah. Um, and just nice starscape. I like the gradient from the kind of uh, more probably um, light pollution on up to the dark, dark night sky. And there's not a ton of foreground, which makes the sky stand out even more. And you can still see the trees and some of the, a little bit of, you know, the horizon line, which is very interesting. So I like that you chose to keep your foreground very small. It's a good. Yeah, I think maybe, you know, maybe darken this a little bit, bring that into the shadow the way the west of it is. Um, it's catching a little bit of light from somewhere over in that general area. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, I think this is very nice. Yep. Thank you. All right. JCB. That's what I call him. I don't know if he calls himself that. I'm not a fan of the selective coloring. I think we've talked about this before. I... It definitely, it definitely makes me look at her eye, but I think that the photo is strong enough without selective coloring that I would just look at her eye anyway, because it's the only point of interest that has as much detail or enough detail and enough contrast to become a clear, you know, focal point of the image. So I wonder if you could have cropped a little bit either above or below to bring the eye, I think probably above, to bring the eye into the top right frame a little bit more. So maybe like over here to follow rule of thirds a little bit better. Uh, but I, I mean, I think it's, you know, the, the so 7.1 and shot at 100 millimeters. So I, I think the depth of field is great and it's super sharp and in focus. And it's a great photo. Um, I think the only thing that I just am not a fan of is the selective coloring, but that's a personal aesthetic taste, so. Yeah. I think you're nailing the suggestions tonight. Mm, you're not leaving me with much to add. I think this is a great shot. I, again, I you know, this one grabbed my attention when I was scrolling through the group shots before. It did grab my attention um, because it's very clearly a selective color. I have to say it's one of the nicer ones I've seen in a while. I'm generally not a fan of them either, um, but... Let's put that aside and, and just say exposure, I think, is awesome. And the detail in here is just great. And the focus is very nice. And I think the idea of, of putting uh, moving the eye up into this general region uh, is a good one. Thank you. That's her eye number two. I wonder what her eye number one <laughs> looks like. All right, this is Timothy Wong. Also goes by Tim Orange. And he's got a picture of his girlfriend. In the Rebel Casino. They had nice walls to use as backdrops, although the lighting was dim. So you're up at ISO 2000. That's all right. You know, if the exposure is good, you don't have to worry about going up there in that general area. I think you've put her in the perfect spot. Yes. Um, now, you know, obviously she's sitting on the seat, but in this background, the way the swirls come in, that works really nicely. Might have come up just a little bit to fit her head into that spot more. Um, and but, straighten your horizon. And straighten your horizon. Hey, this is the first picture tonight where we've said that. Yes. So maybe folks are listening to us. Mm. Or it just happened that none were with crooked horizons <laughs> until Tim's got in here. So Tim, thanks for letting us remind folks that we really like to see the horizon straight. The left-hand side of this image is a little bit higher than the right. And so we could come down. But I think you did a nice job of capturing all 
all the way down to the feet and leaving a little bit of room there, just mm -hmm. enough. Um, and so I think that's nice. Yeah, and I like the pose that she's in too. It's, okay. It seems very flattering and I, I think it's a great, very casual portrait that, you know, you would take on an outing with somebody and it's probably, you know, like the best kind of portrait you could take in these situations. And I would say, don't be shy about going a little bit wider. Uh, you could have gone a little bit wider here, which also would have allowed you to drop your ISO just a little bit. Um, and yeah, just for that reason, I think the background would still be strong enough, even if it was just a little bit less in focus. That's good. You could easily go on to F2 in this case, I think. Great. Thanks, Tim. Adam has this one of collecting. Jumps out at me at how sharp yeah. those nuts and acorns are in there. Yeah. F7. Got a lot of F7s tonight. Yeah, we do. And, and you know, it's great that you can see so much bokeh and depth of field in these and, and almost all of these pictures. Kit lens again. Yeah. So you can take great photos with the kit lens if you use it right. So first thing that I would change about this image is the cropping. I think I would crop it just a teeny bit. So so both feet are out of it. Yeah, so ideally you want to, so the, I mean obviously this is like a such a perfectionist thing to say, but ideally I think you want to do cropping in camera so that you don't affect the look of the photo later. You can crop things to make them look stronger, but try to get into the habit of cro visualizing these things before you take the image when you're looking through the viewfinder so that you don't have to crop later on. But I would just crop a tiny bit so that this pink doesn't bring my eye out from here. Um, and then I might adjust the white balance just a teeny tiny bit to make it warmer. Uh, but that, Wow, this I feel like it's just, pretty warm already. Really? You think so? I do. No, these, the, look, the skin tone here looks a little bit blue. You're, you, are, you notice that much more than I do. I mean, it's a minute, like, mm -hmm. change, mm -hmm. but okay. but it would help, I think. Yeah. And I just, I'm, this, the sharpness here is just crazy. It's like, it's almost... Adam, did you do any post-process sharpening or clarity? And Curious. if you did, that's awesome, because then, yeah, cameras right out of camera are not sharpened enough. And Especially a raw shot. You should always, always sharpen your pictures. Yeah, yep. if you shoot raw, you should always sharpen your pictures before you post them anywhere. Nice. And also, we've seen uh, most have been manual exposure tonight, too. It's great. Yep. Thank you, Adam. Nice photo. Oh, this aw. is cute. This is very cute. I mean, she is happy to be carrying this little goat around. No, I goat, would be, too. Goat doesn't look too unhappy. <laughs> pretty happy. It's getting a free ride. So, Rue got a new friend here and this is with the 50 nice lens oh, I, this is a great shot right off the bat I don't necessarily see any big improvements We're getting picky we've got this dividing line here of the grass that yes. runs right up through their heads uh, if you had taken a half a step to the left or right um, and maybe captured them completely within the grass or lowered yourself just a little bit so that they are completely against what I'm going to assume is road or gravel driveway or something in the background. Um, could make this a little bit stronger, but that's fairly minor. Thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed uh, and you say, why do I need to subscribe? I come through the Facebook. I know how to get here. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It does help. Those numbers help uh, and we appreciate it. And it's an easy way for you to thank us for our time. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good night. Good night.